Hello everyone, Titanius Fantasia here. Welcome to Picking Apart, a series where I review episodes of cartoons. And don't be fooled by the title, Picking Apart does not mean that I will have a negative take, it's that I want to take a deep dive into the episode. Now I've had enough with The Simpsons, and I've decided to make a change. And what I mean by that is that I'm tired of the social media managers of The Simpsons posting the majority of clips on Twitter instead of YouTube and cropping the clips into thirds for mobile viewing. So hopefully this review gets past the bots, because when I make videos past a certain point, it gets pretty dicey. This episode has inspired me to talk a lot about it, so I need to pull more clips from the episode than what gets uploaded to YouTube and Twitter. And the fact that the full clips look better than the Twitter cropping, that too. That's a big plus for you watching the video. If only The Simpsons were handled like Family Guy and I get 10 minutes of footage to clip and splice through to comment over, but I got fair use on my side, so hopefully that protects this video. Now without further ado, let's get into My Octopus and a Teacher. Yes, I know it sounds like a title that I would make up. So for a little bit of context, since longtime Simpsons voice actor Marcia Wallace passed away in 2013, Bart Simpson has not had a recurring 4th grade teacher. Wallace voiced longtime fan favorite Mrs. Edna Krabappel, who was Bart's burnt out teacher and frequent flame of Principal Seymour Skinner before settling down with Ned Flanders at the end of the show's 22nd season. The death of Marcia Wallace and the subsequent retirement of the Corbapo character left a hole in the hearts of Simpsons fans. The second most notable passing of a regular actor on the show after Phil Hartman was tragically shot by his wife in 1998. Eventually, there was going to come to a point where we would see a replacement for Mrs. Corbapo, and after nearly a decade, we finally got one. The replacement of Mrs. Corbapo started with the retirement of non-black voice actors voicing black characters on The Simpsons. Now I don't necessarily have a problem with voice actors playing characters that don't reflect who they are, but when you have a show like The Simpsons with a cast of hundreds and hundreds of secondary and tertiary characters, and you have no regular black voice actors on the show when you're a show made in the United States, where about one in every eight people are black, then yes, you should have more black voice actors on the show. Whomever characters they voice are not really important. With the backdrop of protests against police brutality against blacks in the summer of 2020, Drama actor Carrie Washington tweeted that she was interested in voice acting and The Simpsons reached out to her, wanting to have more non-white voice actors on the show, and eventually the character of Mrs. Rachelle Payton was created to fill a void on The Simpsons. So on Sunday, television viewers met Bart's new teacher, but it turned out that Bart actually met her before, which makes Bart act unusual for the bulk of the episode, as viewers are left in the dark as to why. As Bart hides something from us, it turns out that Lisa is also hiding something from people in a fairly surprising story. Lisa filmed a documentary about an octopus, where she is rewarded the most ethical documentary award for letting a shark eat an octopus that she had grown accustomed to. But it turns out that she saved the octopus and edited it out of her documentary. As a result, we get two stories, one about a teacher and one about an octopus. So strap yourself in because we are getting through an emotional event. In the B story, Lisa tries to control an adventurous octopus that wants to explore around the house, and in the A story, Bart desperately wants to keep Mrs. Payton from recognizing him. But his attempts to remain invisible fail completely as he acts up even more than usual. So both characters attempt to keep a lid on things, but they can't keep their problems from popping over the surface. Lisa's story is definitely more comedic than Bart's, but it's arguably more emotional too as she forms quite a close bond with the octopus, which she names Molly. With Bart, his acting up in class serves more to set up the story than it does to provide any laughs. Though we do get an intervention for Bart by Nelson and Milhouse in the beginning of the second act, pretending like they are Bart's parents. It's a funny thing in that they're like an odd couple, the dud and the bully. You don't seem in control. We can't laugh at your clowning if we're concerned about you. Honestly, I think Nelson may be more concerned about Bart's emotional well-being than Milhouse. Nelson has this surprising nurturing side for him. If only he had a better home life, maybe we would see something different. Speaking of home lives, the best fake out of the episode is this. Be patient. They may test you at first, but it's only because of their terribly sad home lives. Hello, teachers! Yeah, we all know it's true. We've had a lot of Simpsons episodes where we see the teachers of Springfield Elementary have terrible home lives. The most famous being Season 3's Bart the Lover for sure. And trust me, Mrs. Payton will soon come to see the misery the other teachers have as she gets the experience of teaching Bart Simpson. The question of Bart acting up in class makes us all wonder why. 
Well, it turns out that Bart met Mrs. Payton before. Bart happened to be drowning, and his future teacher saved him, which embarrassed him, so he lashed out at her. And being a 10-year-old, Bart fears that Mrs. Payton will hate him when she finally recognizes him. Haven't we all feared a secret being revealed which would ruin everything? The only problem is that Bart's inner emotional turmoil makes him lash out in class, which is causing more problems than the one he's trying to prevent. This has happened to all of us in some form before, so it's a very relatable plot with Bart, and I enjoy it because we get to see a variety of emotions expressed by him. An uncertain Bart is often the best Bart. The best part of the episode is very surprising. It's not the story of Bart or the story of Lisa, but it's how Homer is handled. After about season 9, Homer's character is often criticized for being too crude and selfish, but in this season we're seeing a Homer that is kinder and gentler than he's been for years. Sure, he's still stupid, but the big lug still has a heart. Just take this gem of a line from him. I'm keeping it to myself! I've met her before. So, I've met people! Lisa? Maggie? Uh, you? Yeah, he remembers Maggie for once. That's a shocker. In this scene, Homer actually has a good parenting plan for Bart, but Bart just opens up to him, which makes him initially mad that he's being rejected, only to come to realize that he's getting something better from Bart. It's not every day that Bart feels enough confidence in Homer to talk about his feelings with his dad. Usually he would try to roast the old man. But not only is Homer a useful parent in this scene, he helps Bart, and Lisa unintentionally, in the final act. It actually turns out that Homer's initial assumption about Bart's acting up was correct. Bart does have a crush on his teacher. And Homer tells Bart the reality of having unreciprocated feelings. Look, sometimes there are awesome things in this world that aren't meant to be your awesome thing. You gotta let it go. Trust me, there's other fish in the sea. What Homer tries to convey to Bart is a tough lesson to deliver. It's a revelation that even adults have trouble dealing with from time to time. And Bart shows an inability to control his feelings immediately. But he's just a kid, so it's not surprising. Though we do get a hilarious octopus related disaster, and if there is one thing you take away from this video, never forget that Kurt Van Houten is a bum. Uh, uh, styrofoam specks! Uh, brushing just attracts more of them! The most touching part of Homer's advice to Bart is that Lisa overhears it and resolves to set Molly the octopus free after the assembly. Lisa couldn't let the octopus go, so she saved it from a shark and brought it home. But she comes to realize that Molly belongs in the wild, not as her pet. Given that Lisa doesn't have a lot of friends, it's a really mature decision for her to return the octopus to the ocean. It's a nice contrast with Bart, as Bart has to continuously cause trouble before he comes to a conclusion that he has to change, where Lisa gets there with only relatively minor intervention. And besides, the octopus is really smart, it will have no problem surviving in the wild. And we do get a salty database scene at the end of the episode, don't we all love that? Maybe he will expose Lisa. After Bart destroys Mrs. Payton's assembly of the new Seven Wonders of the World, Bart finally comes clean to her as a form of an apology. It's obviously a very emotional scene, and Mrs. Payton handles it well, being that she is the one competent teacher in Springfield Elementary. Did I mention that Skinner and Chalmers hid in a coat closet to discuss Mrs. Payton's competency? Actual qualified teacher. And she's stuck here because her husband sucks at oboe. Booyah! <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, if you ever need advice on how to deal with a child that is acting up, Mrs. Payton is probably the only teacher at Springfield to look towards. The only comedic quirk that Mrs. Payton has is that she's prone to a lot of Freudian slips, saying what she actually means instead of what she intends to, which for a teacher is a comedic bit. Besides that one foible, she's more of an average person that you would meet walking down the street than a Simpsons character. I like Mrs. Payton. I don't love her. I may grow to like her more, but I don't know what the Simpsons plan to do with her in subsequent appearances. She seems to be destined to be a background character like Miss Hoover, and to be a prominent secondary character that Mrs. Krabappel turned into. And that's okay. I never expect a new character to take the same role that the old character did. I'm glad that Mrs. Payton is different from Mrs. Krabappel. And if her only limelight was this one episode, then it would be a shame, because this episode was rather good. Yeah, the cat's out of the bag. I really enjoyed this one. We got introduced to a cool new character, Bart and Lisa had entertaining emotional storylines, and Homer is a good father. What more could you possibly ask for? Well, maybe some more Groundskeeper Willie. That's always nice. <laughs> they are so screwed. 
Well, better get off to me side, Hustle. Woof, woof. Birthday dog says happy- Who would have thought that an episode called My Octopus and a Teacher could deliver so much in storytelling? I for one was pleasantly surprised by this week's episode. If you haven't seen it yet, you should definitely check it out. There's a bunch of humor in it too. Though if I had to say that I had a gripe with this episode, it would be in the inclusion of the song Sucker by the Jonas Brothers. It didn't feel at all like it fit for The Simpsons. One of The Simpsons ever about pop music. Like me, most of her brain cells are located in her tentacles, which can smell, taste, and even think. Wait a minute. No imagination. I have more imagination in one tentacle than you two have in your whole bodies. That's good. Now all you need is a box. Wow, it turns out that Squidward wasn't bluffing at all. Huh. I guess Carolyn Omine just completed my childhood. And before you ask, no, I'm not reviewing When Billy Met Lisa because I don't have Disney+. Plus. Next, I'm going to review something near and dear to my heart, an overweight, balding, fat man. Well, I'm definitely a sucker for all those likes and comments, so I'd appreciate it if you dropped one if you enjoyed this video. If you didn't, then it's like it. This is Titanius, turning off the TV. See you next time. Bye!